Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. Now, uh, as you may have, as you probably tell, Psychic Connections episode did not go up before this one, and that is because I found out. Well, I had about four lines of four lines of dialogue left, and then the build ended. So we're just gonna have to wait until the game gets updated again, guys. I really sorry about that, but I've got the Violet Memoir that I'm going through and the other, these other games, so don't worry, we've got plenty of content to get through, but anyway, everyone, sit back and enjoy, and let's continue our journey. Alarm Chan, you are up. He muses, closing his eyes and enjoying my rubbing. I'm not exactly an expert, but I simply follow cues from his body. I apply as much pressure and force as it takes to draw a grunt from him, letting up and changing spots when I can see he's getting too worked up by it. Mmm, feels good to be home. He croons in pleasure. A soft growl reverberating in his playful words draws a slight blush from my cheeks. He mistakes my embarrassment for something else and quickly turns to face me with a regretful expression. I'm sorry, that was stupid of me. What? I blink in confusion. All you must be thinking about is getting back home, and then I throw a comment like that. I smile at his train of thought. He's being considerate to a fault. It's fine, really. I know what you want. I know what you meant. I know what you want. I'll take you back. I promise. He insists, his gaze full of determination. I know. I reassure him. I have absolutely no doubts about his intentions, and I'd rather not talk about my forgotten home right now. I simply nod towards my hands, letting him know I want to return to the massage. He sighs, shaking his head in amusement, and rests back against the chair, allowing the access to his aching muscles. Well, sort of. I still have, to, I still have all his gear in my way. It would be easier if I take this off. I knock on his shoulder pad. Hmm, that eager to undress me, huh? The wolf chuckles, causing me to gasp in annoyance. I only remind myself that teasing is just in his nature. I shall play along. We'll see who breaks first. If that's what you like to think... I shrug, approaching him from the front and sinking my fingers beneath the plate to fill up the latch. I can see embarrassment paint across his entire muzzle. He really is all bark but no bite. Um... What's the matter? Human got your tongue? Human will get bitten if he's not careful. He issues a soft, playful growl as I detach the piece of armor. Huh. Didn't even skip a beat. He mutters with a slight surprise. It takes me a moment to realize he's talking about my heart. I can see a proud smile stretch across his muzzle. He started to trust me. He says with satisfaction, and I just can't help myself. That, or perhaps you're not as scary as you think you are. I chuckle, placing the metal pad onto the table. Aren't I? The wolf croons, raising from his seat and squaring up with me. I literally reached only to his breast and had not and had not for his obviously gleeful tail swings, I even might have been a little intimidated. Nope, you're just a well kempt fluffball. I'll take that as a compliment. I must have said it wrong. I tease, but he only shrugs, removing his leather straps and placing his massive sword against the wall next to the hearth. Ma his massive sword, huh? One second, guys. Okay, there we go. Just had to clear my throat. <clears> throat> once he sits back, once he sits himself back at the table, I get full rain over his entire back. I smile, ribbing his tense neck muscle while he draws air through his teeth. I guess that's a sore spot, so I try to be gentler around it. Eventually, he breaks the silence, his voice slightly deeper and strained due to my massage. Did you manage to jog your memory a little while I was gone? Remembered anything at all? <sighs> nope. I shrug in defeat, causing him to fall silent for a moment. Shame. I was hoping there was a silver lining to your earlier distress. A bad memory, perhaps. No such luck, I'm afraid. My distress seems to be entirely of my own making. Literally, it's all just in my own head. He burrows deep into his thoughts as I continue kneading his shoulders. In truth, it feels almost therapeutic for me, not to mention I get to feel up all his muscles. He's almost like a walking anatomy model. You worry about your memory, I get that. But I'm also glad I get to show you a bit of your a bit of our life. He mutters, taking an idle sip of his ale. Perhaps this way you'll be able to see the rest of Avalon through my eyes. It's quite something, I'll tell you that. Being able to experience it anew almost makes me envy your memory loss. He laughs merrily while I push slightly harder against his shoulder and punish for, for, for making light of my situation. As he groans softly under my workout, I simply pretend it was unintentional. Have you ever been outside of this forest? I ask, moving my hands down to his shoulder blades. Outside of turning? 
Is that what it's called? He nods, drawing air through his fangs in pain as, as I find another bruised spot. When I was little, I snuck out of the village. I hid inside an herb sack in one of our caravans, headed for, Str for Strandbard. I suppressed a chuckle, imagining the scene. He, the scene. He was a troublemaker since birth. So that's where your scent comes from? I proposed cheekily. My scent? He blinks in confusion. For a moment, I wonder whether the comment was too forward on my part. I quickly laugh it off, though. I had to endure his teases. It's about time he wasted his. He tasted his own medicine. You smell like the forest. I mused, noticing his tail give an idle flicker before it began slowly swaying back and forth. He's struggling to contain a smile, clearly enjoying my observation. Where's Strandbard? I decide to spare him the lingering embarrassment of a genuine compliment by bringing our conversation back on track. But it's handy to know that when he pushes my buttons, I can push a few back. It's a tigery town just outside of our territory. It's where most of our interactions with the outside world take place. The name is actually derived from an old inn around with the t which the town grew, the Stranded Bard. Ah. I expected the place to be crawling with tigers, but to my surprise, it was filled with all sorts of creatures. There were lions there, sylvan folk of all shapes and sizes, even lynxes and wolves. I muse, easing up on the workout and trying to imagine those various beastmen. It all seems so fantastical. I saw cubs playing with pups in the streets, as if they didn't see they were different species. There were no combat training. No preparation for war of any sorts, just idle folk going about their idle lives. I almost picture a fairy tale town with happy people only doing happy things and thinking happy thoughts. The only thing missing is the townsfolk randomly bursting into a choreographed song. I noticed his perception as a child, and perhaps the town wasn't as idyllic. However, the description does strike a chord with me. It sounds beautiful, really. Hmm. He pauses, looking rather concerned. It made me wonder why we lead such different lives, while we shied away from the other kid and jealously protected our woods. We're trained in combat since we're pups, always preparing for a war. Other kid and youth play with wooden swords and chase hoops. It was very confusing. I glanced at his chiseled but rather his chiseled but battered body, and I can see that the wolf really didn't have an idle day in his life. Instead his days were filled with endless chain of spars and exercises meant to hone his physique. He might have a rocking bod, but it came at the cost of his childhood. It's almost sad, really. When my father found out, he was furious. We don't let pups outside our territory. We don't want them to get the wrong ideas. I blink. Wrong ideas? Like, diversity and fun aren't bad? You can scoff all you like, but yes. It makes you question everything your people stand for. I've been questioning everything since I woke up! I can't hold in a laugh. I find questioning things to be yet another good policy. One second, guys. <clears throat> okay. Now we're near too young to understand what it is that you're questioning. Sheltering your kids like that doesn't seem right. Almost like you're indoctrinating them. Renick looks back at me, and I finally splay my hands out in a what gesture. <sighs> you don't understand. From what you're saying, you don't understand it either. I protest through a snicker. I know why I know why we don't let the young ones out. For the tribe to be strong, their resolve needs to be strong. The other kin don't need to worry about wars. There's millions of them. They have plenty of soldiers, and even if most of their people never seen a weapon in their entire life. There's maybe a hundred thousand of my kin left within these woods. We need to keep our wits about us to hold on to what we've got left. Now there's really not a lot of them left. I frown, slowly losing my hope that Rannick is that much different from the rest of his people. From what I've heard so far, they seem to be highly militarized, almost totalitarian society. So, you agree with this? Pups fighting with swords rather than playing with toys? Is that what really what you want? I don't want our people to be weak, but I also don't want them to continue this course. Avalon changed, and we should change with it. I want to see what the Tigers do with their supremacy over the continent. If indeed the Alliance of Tigaron is a fellowship of equals, it's painting itself to be. Or just another lie, like the rebellion where we traded one overlord for another. Immediately, I remember the book I browsed through. I almost want to engage with the topic, but eventually I just sigh, looking at my hands still kneading his strained shoulders. This is all really weird, like a fairy tale. Talking beasts, castles, and queens. A little girl comes to my mind. She's lost in a strange world, and her only way home is to simply follow the lead no matter the madness. Through the looking glass... I chuckle, knowing I even had my own off-with-his-head encounter just the day before. Hmm? Nothing. 
I shake my head, looking back at him. I might not know much about wolves and tigers, but the more you say, the more convinced I am that this little adventure you had as a pup did more good than harm. It made you curious. That longing to explore and to understand, it made you more accepting of others, and I admire it. He stretches out with a satisfied grin. Thanks. I'm also glad we'll get to share this little adventure together, learning from one another. Damn right! Rennick cheers, raising his mug and spilling a little bit of his brew. I roll my eyes in slight annoyance. I just clean the floors. In all fairness, I was quite nervous about you. I knew you were my path the moment I found you, but I worried. What about? You know. He mutters with a troubled expression. Sorry, but I saw something pop up. Would we? He interlocks his fingers in a jigsaw gesture and I laugh. And did we? I smirk, causing his eyes to narrow. Okay, I think you're confusing overconfidence for an attractive trait. As the kettle said to the pot, I quote him right back, pushing playfully on one of his muscles and the wolf widens his eyes in shock. Our joint laughter fills the room and I return to soothing his aching back. I must admit, it feels nice to be able to talk with someone so openly. No matter the subject or what our, our respective position is on the matter, we always manage to return to a common ground. It's an amazing quality. This wolf, there's something about him that I simply adore. Because yeah, he's a good boy. Damn, this feels good. I bet. I slice a sly smile paints across my face as I bask in his praise. That is, until I see a bulge in his crotch growing larger with each workout I give to his muscles. He's enjoying it far too much! I pull my hands away, returning hastily to the table, pretending I haven't noticed. Last thing I want is him getting all self-conscious and giving me another speech about, about being defective. I grab my mug and nervously bring it to my mouth, trying to swallow a long gulp. Thanks. I needed that. He mutters, still severing the afterglow of my massage. You're welcome. I respond, looking away to hide my blush. I want to continue this conversation, but I see he's completely out of it. He just leans his head back and rests his eyes. I slurp the ale through the awkward silence, checking up on him every now and then. Every time he's around a complete sense of calm... Every time he's around, a complete sense of calm descends upon me to the point where I simply enjoy his presence. I look at the trees outside, gently rustling on the wind. I wonder what time it is. Curious about the curious about the Tiger Rebellion he mentioned, I consider picking up the blue book again, when I notice Rannick's head slumped slightly to the side. I think he drifted off to sleep. I look at his crotch and can confirm he has been completely pacified. Damn! He must have been really exhausted. That, or my rubdown, relax him to the point of utter bliss. I chuckle it off. Who am I kidding? My poor attempt at a massage most likely will cause him soreness in the morning. I also banish any thoughts of late night reading. Sitting here in the dimly lit kitchen with the snug warmth of the fire, I became quite groggy myself. I allow us a few more moments, struggling with my drink, until I give up. The bitter brew is not my kind of thing. I poke Rannick, stirring him up from his nap. Mentally, he's already in tomorrow, so I have to help him up. Considering his size, it's not an easy task. He really weighs a lot. Once he stands up, he slumps slightly onto my shoulder, and I almost stumble. Okay there, buddy, let's go. I lead us slowly into the bedroom. When inside of the bed, Rannick plops onto it with a heavy thud. I love you so much. He mutters quietly, clearly addressing the mattress. I find it rather cute. Within just a moment, I can hear him snoring softly. I blow out the candles, laying myself down next to him. I dart my eyes between his peaceful muzzle and the soft flickers of the slowly dying fire within the hearth. I haven't felt this calm the entire day. The soft orange hues flooding from the kitchen just make this whole scene so idyllic. Only one thing would make it better. As if he read my mind, as if he read my mind, Rannick's massive paw swoops behind me and pulls me closer to his chest. Concerning what he said, I should try and free myself from his embrace, but I am nowhere near that strong-willed. Instead, I succumb to my dire need for proximity. I sigh, smiling in, mix, in a mix of guilt and happiness, completely enveloped by his smell. I try not to fall asleep just yet, simply enjoying his intimacy. I could stay like this forever, just watching him sleep, his peaceful muzzle softly smiling even through his slumber. But it doesn't take long for his rhythmic breathing to lull me to rest, and I effort, effortlessly drift away into a tranquil dream. A tranquil dream until that damn voice starts talking again. How long is it going to take? I spend several hours buried snugly in the memory of his warm embrace, which carries me through the night. Eventually, I'm stirred awake by a gentle shaking on my shoulder. Hmm. 
to struggle to open my eyes, but as I blink in the dim light of the room, I can see Rannick standing above me in full gear. Confused by the darkness, I look towards the window. <sighs> it's still night. I have to leave before dawn. Why? I mutter groggily, still firmly gripped by my calm dream. I've taken morning patrol duties. If all goes well, I might return earlier than yesterday. I rub my eyes, getting out of the bed. Immediately, my teeth begin to chatter as the chill of the early morning envelops me. Fuck, it's cold! It's a wonder I didn't freeze to death in my sleep! Well... He looks at me with a cheeky grin. Oh no, what have I done now? We kind of spend most of the night spooning together. Not that I blame you, frivolous little creep. He winks at me, ruffling my messy hair. For someone who claims to be straight as an arrow, he doesn't seem to mind getting intimate. I'm... I'm sorry. Don't be. He waves his paw at me. As I said, I get it. It is a cold night. I seriously need to get some clothes. I'll talk to Varissa. Maybe she has a spare dress you could borrow. I give him a death stare. Not even remotely funny. He laughs me off, clearly amused by the idea. Who said it was a joke? I rub my arms energetically, trying to warm up, as the wolf takes curious glances around the room. I think he's only now noticing my exploits from the previous day. Is it just me, or did you clean the entire house? Oh, he, yeah. I mumble awkwardly. You don't have to do anything around here, you know this, right? He asks, almost as if my effort weighs heavily on his consciousness. Well... Vol might be calling me a piglet, but that doesn't mean I have to live in a pigsty. I blurt out cheekily, catching him off guard. He quickly laughs it off, giving me a teasing smirk. Well, forgive me, my lord. Is my humble abode not to your liking? Oh, stop it. I shake my head as he bids me to follow with a gesture of his paw. Come. The wolf disappears into the other room and I go after him, hoping that the kitchen hearth is already burning. I'm relieved to see that it is, and I place myself next to it, my skin seeping in all the warmth it can get. I look at the wolf with confusion as he grabs a bowl from the table and stirs something inside of it. Varissa gave me an idea for a nice treat. Oh? I approach him as he invites me to inspect the contents. I gaze curiously inside the bowl and immediately recognize a familiar batter. Pancakes? I ask with glee. Mm-hmm. He smiles toothly as his tail gives an energetic flick. Glad to see she was correct. You've got morning duties, yet you woke up early to get the breakfast ready? He's so busy, yet he still finds time to do something special just for us. Well, it's only fair after that lovely rubdown you gave me. The wolf rotates his right shoulder with clear relief. I feel like a newborn pup. I almost blush at the comment. Really glad I was able to ease him up. Still, I think he's only saying that to make me feel good. My massage was sloppy at best. And I need to compensate you for your complete makeover of my house. Again, he looks around awkwardly, clearly embarrassed that I cleaned. I watch as he rubs his hind paw across the wooden panels, causing them to squeak. The floor wasn't this shiny since I've laid it down with wool. I just, I just chuckle, shaking my head with amusement as I walk towards the cupboard to wash up. It was nothing, really. It gave me something to do. Oh, well then, perhaps next time you could rethatch my roof. He proposes through a snark, and I simply shrug. Sure, if you show me how it's done. I was only joking. He sounds almost offended. I honestly don't want you to do menial tasks around the house. Despite our circumstances, you are my guest. But how am I supposed to earn a treat from you? I wink, really amused by how uncomfortable my housework made him. I will feed you well, regardless of services rendered. Don't you worry about that. He huffs and finally, and I finally face the water bowl. I thought you said you can't bring food home. Father gave me permission on the count of you being here. I reluctantly touch the water and blink. It's warm. I throw my head back to look at the wolf, who smiles at me with satisfaction. I warmed it up for you. Don't want you cussing again. He laughs and I quickly divert my gaze, getting slightly choked up. That wolf is being extremely considerate. Even with his paws full, he tries to accommodate me in every possible way. Speaking of paws, I've noticed him using both without a clear dominant one. Are you ambidextrous? My, isn't that a mouthful? I wash my hands and throw him a confused gaze. I mean, you're using both paws equally. Yeah? Why? Nothing, it's just quite impressive. I cup some water with my palm, slushing it across my arms. Ooh, cracked my finger, there we go. We're all trained from pups to use both paws equally. It's quite important for combat. Weren't you? 
he asks as I watch my face. Why would I be? Do I look like a soldier? Heh, <laughs> you certainly don't sound like one. Rannick only chuckles while I shake my head and dry my skin with a towel. Right, I've got some blueberries and bacon. He points to the table where I find two plates with already prepared ingredients. I don't mind sweet foods, but I do need some meat with my meals. Well, you are a wolf. I chuckle. So, what's it going to be? You want blueberries with yours, or bacon? Ooh, how about both? I immediately think about the breakfast from yesterday. That combination worked fine for me. And if he has, a, if he has early duty, I don't want to waste too much time fiddling with variations. Both sounds interesting, plus less hassle. Yeah, my type of guy. I watch the wolf dump the berries and cube bacon into the bowl and mix them energetically into the batter. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!